it's LinkedIn and we're going to start in a minute or two. Yeah, we'll just check it out. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, we are live and we are joining very soon <clears throat> in one or two minutes. Yeah, I can see my uh, my live stream. This is great. So yeah, and uh, I see you joining us. This is good. So let's wait for one minute, just in case uh, maybe someone will join a bit later and we start. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I hope it will be a very useful session for you. So yeah, just a minute and we start. I'll just start sharing my screen. Okay, yeah, let's wait for a bit and we'll start. Yeah, today we have a very interesting topic about building systematic social selling process. So I suggest we start. Uh, thank you everyone to joining our webinar today and especially for those who are joining each of our webinars because we organize them quite often on a quarterly basis. Uh, we are Modemap Social Selling Agency and I'm Olga Wonderova, the founder of the agency and uh, we'll start our webinar with my presentation. I'm going to talk about uh, building systematic social selling process. Then uh, we are going to talk about some case studies on how to do it in company with our guest and our client, uh, fintech company Exante. And uh, actually, it will be the third, <laughs> third presentation. And the second presentation uh, will be from uh, Leonardo Bellini, a social selling expert, um, and very famous in Italy and uh, very interesting and uh, knowledgeable expert who will share uh, his best practices on how to build systematic social selling tool. So let's start with my presentation. Um, actually, a little bit about me. Um, now I have my own agency uh, for five years already, almost. Uh, in summer, we will celebrate five years uh, from the agency start. And before the agency, I used to work from uh, for Microsoft and I was responsible for social media in uh, Central and Eastern Europe region. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this experience because it's also connected to social selling. And um, I would like to um, explain you what's social selling, what is it about? Um, who's joining us on a regular basis, you already know it, but I will just uh, say it for those who are here for the first time. Uh, social selling is expert social media profile development to acquire potential clients, partners or employees. So best Basically, you can uh, achieve any business goals, business needs with social selling, but uh, it's important that you use personal social media profiles for this, uh, for this goal. And if we are talking about systematic social selling approach, I think that uh, it's important to look at it, to talk about it on different levels. First one is a personal level, because uh, of course we start with the person, this is the personal profile. We need to do it systematically to develop this profile, to build the personal brand on social media. Um, and also would like to look at it from the department perspective, how to inspire the whole department to do social selling, to be active on social media, maybe to generate leads, partners, clients, to uh, promote some companies' updates on uh, social media, especially on LinkedIn, but not only this platform. And the third level, the fundamental and the widest level is the company level. Of course, uh, many companies dream about it, but also many companies are afraid of it, <laughs> of uh, all of their employees are active on social media. 
yeah, this is risky, but it gives you a lot of benefits because if your employees are active on social media, they bring a lot of bonuses to the company, new clients, new partners, maybe some other opportunities like journalists, uh, and you, they bring some influencers and they, they build HR brands uh, on social media. So it's a um, very powerful tool for the company you work at. And let's start with the smallest level, but the most important one, uh, the personal level. Here, I would like to start with a case study. Um, with Georgia State University, we work with, this is the case study of our agency. We, are, we plan to publish it very soon. And we work with the professor of computer science. Uh, his name is Sergey Please. And uh, together with Sergey, we built his personal brand on LinkedIn and Twitter. And uh, the mix of professional and personal content builds trust and also provides some networking opportunities for Sergey because uh, he gets a lot of comments from his audience. It helps him to connect to other scientists from different universities. And of course, it's important for the future collaborations. And also it helps him to uh, connect to some companies which can also collaborate with his university or him as an expert. So it's also very beneficial for him. And um, <clears throat> if we are talking about the systematic approach to the one person, <laughs> to the one person's profile, how we do it, we start with, of course, with initiating the contact with uh, your target audience. Uh, first of all, you need to grow your network to add uh, the right people to your connections. Then uh, you need to generate demand or build your uh, professional brand uh, what I mean here that you need to build this strong association between your topic and you as a person. So, for example, they need the experts in, I don't know, data science, and they remember that, yeah, I know, I know Sergey, he, he does that. And of course, yeah, we, we can work together. Uh, and it, this is how you generate demand or build this association regular reposting uh, content. Um, then, of course, it's important to build relationships and interacting with your audience. Because usually when you just post uh, content, broadcast your expertise, it doesn't bring you such um, meaningful relationships because uh, only interactions with people can uh, give you this privilege to have these um, wonderful relationships with them. It's very important to interact with them, to comment on their posts, to like their posts, to endorse their skills, etc., etc. And then, of course, you can start the conversations with them, uh, offer valuable content, invite to an event, uh, give something useful to people, something val valuable for them. And then, uh, of course, if you have some business goals regarding uh, lead generation or employee attraction or maybe partnership search or something like this, you can um, go to call to action and suggest to have a meeting, discuss a potential collaboration or suggest to register somewhere or something else. So this is the step-by-step -step approach, uh, systematic approach <laughs> to my mind, which we use uh, for personal profiles on social media. And of course, uh, in social selling, we use different tactics, different channels. Uh, posting is important, commenting is crucial, as I mentioned already, but the uh, most of the activities on LinkedIn, they happen in personal messages. People interact with others in personal messages, they chat with uh, those who they know and they don't know. And this is why it's important to have these connections in personal messages, to start networking messaging or sharing some useful um, materials, useful things to people and be in touch. Uh, as for the metrics, of course, if we are talking about the systematic approach, we cannot uh, just miss um, metrics. Of course, we cannot skip them. Uh, we have a lot of metrics to assess um, 
the efficiency of social selling for one profile. For example, connection rate, this is about how people accept your connection requests, response rate, how they reply to your messages, or you can uh, even count response rate for your comments, how they reply to your comments. Conversion rate is about, of course, how they convert to the action you need. For example, you need leads, or you need registrations, or you need something else. We can uh, also count this conversion. And we have two metrics uh, for content. First metric is an engagement rate, how your audience engaged with your content. Uh, and the second metric is view rate. Uh, how many people viewed your posts, uh, your updates, etc. And actually, view rate is more important than engagement rate because most of the people, they if they don't know you personally, you haven't met yet, I mean, offline, for example, or didn't have a call, uh, it's not very comfortable for them to interact with your posts, to put likes or comments, but uh, they view it and they read it and they can uh, remember who you are and build this association with your expert topic. So this is why views are more crucial and um, we look at them first. If we are talking about not personal level, but department level, how it works, how to make your <laughs> department use social media uh, for business, actually, to bring new leads, new um, partners, new employees, maybe some other opportunities. How to do it? First of all, I will start with uh, NetApp case study. Uh, this is our client, uh, NetApp is in an in international IT company. You probably know it or can Google it. Um, and um, here it was a very interesting approach how we started. We started uh, working with marketing director of one of the departments and uh, she was our social selling advocate because she believed uh, in the approach. She believed that social media and especially personal profiles, they are very important for um, their business goals and that they can reach uh, reach uh, their audience, IT professionals on social media, on personal profiles and IT directors, for example, and some digital transformation directors and other roles. And um, she started uh, developing her own uh, profiles. It was important because she showed on her example how it works. She was the first uh, in, in the department. Uh, she was a pioneer of the approach in her department and she inspired her colleagues to try social selling. After that, um, the head of the uh, department, head, head of um, the regional office, um, Tatiana, she uh, was observing this project and uh, she found out that yeah this is the very valuable project uh, it brings results and this project helps uh, the company helps NetApp to uh, reach new audience among IT professionals IT directors etc and Tatiana decided as a top manager she decided to work um, in social selling approach and developing her own profiles and uh, with Tatiana, actually, we had great results because um, not only mentioning on the slides, but I think that the most important here is that your targeted companies, top managers from targeted companies, uh, like large banks, large uh, companies in other sectors, in other industries, uh, they are top managers. They came to her personal messages and discussed uh, her posts. Uh, it was not very comfortable for them to do it publicly. They didn't comment on the posts, but they did it in private messages. And uh, she had a lot of meaningful conversations with them, and it helped her sales team to, to sell, actually, after that, because she already has a very warm contact with, uh, with the top managers from targeted companies. So, and after the experience, a very inspiring experience of Tatiana Bacharnikova. Um, her sales team actually started using social media for lead generation and for building relationships with potential clients, and they started doing it on a regular basis. So Tatiana inspired the rest of the team, because if she is a top manager. She is an influencer among her department. And um, it's very important to show that the head of the department does it. And if the head of the department does it, 
all of the employees, they uh, start thinking about it as something serious. And they also start trying uh, using social media for their business goals. And if to summarize this department level, uh, we start with a social selling advocate who tries everything <laughs> on their uh, on their profiles, on their own experience. Then we engage a head of a department because it's very important that a top manager, that a leader uh, shows that this approach works and um, shows others that it's possible to use social media, to be public there, to develop your own uh, personal profile. And then the rest of the department in place, they, they continue working uh, with their social media profiles. Of course, uh, they need some training, they need some guidelines, but, but first what they need is inspiration from their leader. And the next level, the next level is the company level. This is the most <laughs> tricky, <laughs> tricky situation when you need to inspire the whole company using social selling and build your their uh, personal brands on social media. But it's very beneficial, as we already mentioned. And uh, here I will share my experience when I used to be social media marketing lead at Microsoft in Central and Eastern Europe. And actually there uh, I started employee advocacy program. And uh, what is it about? It's actually about personal profiles of the employees uh, to develop them, to make people uh, become active on social media, to make them post something, share company updates, and interact with their target audience. It's difficult, but it's very interesting and challenge, challenging task. Uh, actually, I started with uh, informing our audience, I mean, Microsoft employees, um, about this opportunity because we, we had a platform, um, the content hub where they could just uh, visit and they could share some posts from there. And it was a rating, they could, um, even com <laughs> compare the results with other uh, employees and win some prizes. And first I started informing people. I um, created some funny posters with memes and put them around the office, uh, for example, the kitchens on each uh, floor and somewhere else. Uh, and also I spoke a lot at internal events for salespeople, for marketing people and more general events. And I was talking about it, about the importance of building the personal brand on social media and about the platform where they could have content, they could find it, share and use it. And after that, of course, when uh, I informed them, I needed to teach, to teach our audience how to do it. Because actually social selling, it's not a very complicated process, but still it has a lot of nuances, tips and tricks, etc. So I started lectures, seminars, some master classes and created guidelines for social media behavior to make it easier for people to let them know what to do. Because of course it can be fear of, <laughs> of not knowing what to do. Yeah, when they start developing their profiles and after teaching, of course, they knew they had the algorithm. But uh, many people, this is the, usually <laughs> the problem of educational courses, that many people, they don't do anything after they uh, learn, they know it in theory, but they don't do it. This is the problem. And how I solved this problem? I solved it with gamification, actually, because even adult people <laughs> from uh, on a very serious positions, top managers and for example, salespeople, marketing people, and some other uh, positions, they still love games. They still <laughs> love um, competitiveness. And uh, it's important for them to um, be first or to win. And this is why uh, contests and challenges, they helped a lot. They showed us that people can be really active on social media and uh, they got prices and they just engaged to this process it was fun it was really fun and of course when we engage them it doesn't mean that 
they already have a habit to share things on social media, to be active there, because it can be a very short, short term process. Uh, for example, you activate people and then when you stop activating them, they forget about uh, posting, about developing their own profile. So it's important to form a habit for this. And how we did it uh, using some regular rating, some ongoing activities, regular events about the importance of social media uh, profiles, I mean, personal social media profiles, with the help with of top managers, actually, because some top managers, they also supported this activity and with some emails, with some congratulations to winners, etc. So uh, people could understand that this is very important. And uh, they formed habits. Uh, to use social media, their personal profiles for work-related uh, activities. And if to summarize the company level uh, social selling, I would say systematic social selling, this is very similar to the department level, but uh, here we start with some advocates. Uh, usually these are people who believe in social selling as an approach. They know it, they already tried something on their own, and uh, they believe it works. Then uh, we can, for example, start the pilot project with one or two departments because uh, before we start working uh, using social selling in the whole company, it's important to show that it works, to have some maybe, <laughs> I would say, working, working projects and to show it to top managers, to show it to everyone, uh, to build trust in, in this approach. And then, of course, we engage company top managers because based on the uh, pilot project, they already know that it works, that uh, this project is critical and valuable for the company, and they start engaging. They can also build their profiles, or they can support it somehow. And uh, of course, after uh, top, manager, top manager support, the whole company gets inspired. Of course, not all of them, not all of the people, but many of them. And this is our goal, to engage uh, and inspire as many people as we can. So this is how this algorithm works. And uh, on the company level, how you can measure uh, how you can measure the social selling um, success? Of course, you can use different uh, platforms, different metrics. But the easiest way is social selling index. Actually, uh, all of the LinkedIn users have it, and you can, uh, for example, follow this link and uh, check it out. What's your social selling index? And uh, at Microsoft, we were considering that. 60 and above is a high result. It means that uh, your profile is well developed, you use social media actively, and um, you do a lot of things in terms of social selling. And if it's less than 60, it means that mm, you can you can do better, <laughs> you can you can be more active on social media. And this is how, for example, we um, could identify the most active employees and work with them as influencers, as advocates, and less active employees and work with them separately to motivate them, maybe to, uh, to teach them how to do it, because sometimes people, they just don't know what to do. So, yeah, you can use this metric and um, see the whole picture around the company. And if to summarize, uh, don't forget about three levels of systematic social selling, personal level, department level and company level. Of course, maybe you will find some other <laughs> levels, uh, but this is just a simple structure uh, not to forget about it. And uh, as a bonus, I would like to share some tools for systematic social selling. You will get this PDF presentation, so you will not lose anything uh, and don't worry. But I'll just uh, just comment on what these tools uh, for you. 
Uh, first one, of course, is LinkedIn Sales Navigator. This is a very useful tool uh, for target audience growth and maintaining relationships with the audience. And uh, actually, LinkedIn Sales Navigator uh, is the most important tool for sales, uh, for sales teams, for sales people. But of course, you can use it for the rest of the company too. Uh, of course, I cannot say, <laughs> I cannot just miss, uh, I cannot skip uh, the uh, AI uh, tools which you can use and they really make it faster, make it easier to create content, to generate leads, to create some social selling scripts and uh, even design your profile. So uh, it, it really helps. Uh, so I recommend using it. Um, for example, chat GPT, of course, everyone is talking about it now, uh, but uh, there are also some additional tools like Quillbot, uh, for, you can use it for content, and Midjourney for pictures, and some other, other solutions, so there are a lot of them, uh, which um, include AI. Uh, you can use some solutions for content analytics. For example, analytics and some other solutions. If you would like to automate actions on LinkedIn, it's in a tricky way because automation is the gray zone uh, on LinkedIn. So you can also use some tools like Expandy, Linked Helper, or some other uh, tools. There are so many of them, so many. Uh, you can also use them. And uh, for employee advocacy as a content hub with some gamification, with some ratings, you can use Sociable, Everyone Social, and some other platforms. So there are a lot of interesting tools and platforms you can use for uh, systematic social selling, and they will just make your life easier and, and better. Uh, so, I would like, at the end of my presentation, I would like to remind who we are. We are a modem up social selling agency. Actually, this is our um, pictures from the New Year party <laughs> some time ago. Yeah, it's fun, but I wanted to show our real faces, who we are. Um, and yeah, if you have some questions regarding social selling, you can ask them in comments or uh, maybe you can reach out to me personally or any of our team members and we will answer them. And if you have any business goals related to social selling, we also are open to it. And this is my email. You can um, reach out to me. You can send me an email with your questions. Um, so I would appreciate it. So let's go to questions. Asulhan, do we have some questions? Hi, everyone. Yes, we have a couple of great questions here in the comments. Uh, so the first one is, what criteria do we recommend for selecting employee advocacy program participants? Oh, this is an interesting question. Uh, actually, yeah, we, um, for example, we start an employee advocacy program and we need to choose people who will be participating in this program. Uh, for the first program, uh, I would recommend to invite people who have their uh, internal motivation because it's very important that people are motivated, that they really uh, learn something new and they start implementing it very fast. Because for a pilot project, you need to show the results in a very fast way. So you need the most motivated people. And uh, actually this is how this culture spreads. You start with motivated people and then uh, they inspire others and even the less motivated people, they start doing something. Okay, thank you, Olga. So the next question, I actually like this one. How mm -hmm. can a company monitor participants' activity, including content and comments? Yeah, the, as, as I mentioned already, there are a lot of tools for this. For example, uh, the actually the easiest way how to do it is checking their social selling index. If you have, for example, companies um, LinkedIn subscription, uh, the admins of the company, they uh, will have the access to, to the whole statistics and they can see uh, all of the social selling indexes of all of the employees and they can understand uh, how, how they how active they are on LinkedIn, for example. Uh, also, there are a lot of other platforms, for example, employee advocacy platforms, they, um, using them, you can understand uh, how people, for example, share content. Do they do it? Do they post? Do they share or not? Uh, and if they do, they will uh, get more points and will be on first uh, places in the rating. 
for example. Yep, or you can Olga. do it manually, but it's it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. I just want to remind you guys that uh, please don't hesitate to drop your questions. We're going to answer them as we go, if we have the time or right after the webinar. Uh, that's no question. <laughs> we'll do that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I think we don't have the time for another one because uh, I can see some questions here in the chat, but they'll take time to answer. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, we can answer them after after the webinar. Uh, and you, if you have some specific questions, please just send me an email and I will reply to you and answer your question. So yeah, let's uh, move on. And I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Leonardo Bellini. Leonardo is uh, here with us uh, already. Uh, Leonardo is the founder of DML, uh, Digital Marketing Lab. Uh, he is social science consultant and a professor at the university. And Leonardo will be presenting um, the uh, actually he's joining us again. <laughs> will be presenting um, the social selling for B2B teams. And we'll be discussing the social selling cadence, routine, and the importance of systematic approach. Leonardo, uh, are you with us? Hi, Olga. Yeah, hi. Thank you very nice for your uh, marvelous introduction and presentation. <laughs> Thank uh, you. So I'm going to, to share my screen. I don't know if I have a right to do that. Yeah, yeah, to check it out. I've Change okay. The uh, so, okay. Let me see. Great, it okay. works. Okay. So, uh, hi everybody, and um, in this uh, my presentation, I will speak about how to define your social selling routine. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, just an example. The goal of this uh, um, presentation is to invite you to create your own social selling routine according to your preferences, to your style, to your activity and, and uh, your time that you, are, uh, uh, that you have decided to invest on LinkedIn. Um, um, Olga uh, already presented me. I'm a founder of Digital Marketing Lab and I also have run a sister brand that is called the LinkedIn for Business. Uh, .it. And this is my social selling canvas. Uh, you can see some blocks. Uh, so the first step is to identify your uh, ideal customer profile, then optimize your LinkedIn profile to attract your customers. And then there are other blocks in this canvas. Today, we'll focus on these blocks. That is the action that you uh, could or should run daily in order to get consistency to your efforts and to achieve your results. So let's imagine, let's deep dive in the day of the life of a social seller. So before getting started, you should check uh, and verify that, that uh, you have set your LinkedIn settings in order to receive uh, the right notifications from your network. Uh, so you can uh, um, realize that one uh, person of your, of your network uh, has changed his job, uh, has commented your post, uh, has reacted to your post, uh, and so on. Another point, uh, just to get you start, uh, is uh, if you have uh, a sales navigator, that is one of my recommendations uh, to, to do social selling professionally and properly, you should set your sales alerts. You can set some alerts, for instance, career changes, by the interest, list shares, and suggested leads. So every day you can check if some of your leads has changed his job, so maybe has been promoted in his company, or if some of your leads has visited your profile or has commented one of your posts. 
And uh, at the same time, uh, you should set uh, your uh, sales alerts for uh, accounts. So you could uh, um, realize that one account uh, is uh, growing rapidly, or maybe that uh, there are new senior hires uh, that uh, it's important to you to monitor and to start following uh, and so on. Uh, so my social selling routine and this example is uh, composed by seven steps, seven verbs. First verb is listen and monitor. Second step is manage and plan. Third one is engage, then connect, create content, nurture, and uh, finally measure and refine. So the first step is very important. Listen, raise your ears, uh, check your notifications from mobile app, start your day, for instance, at 7 a.m., and check from your mobile your notifications. Uh, you can start uh, 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 taking notes of some action that you could uh, uh, do uh, during the day. So monitor your notification, you op open your mobile app, scroll down until the first message and uh, uh, ask uh, yourself, who mentioned you in a post? So you could immediately react with a like and maybe with a comment. Or who engaged with your post with a reaction or a comment? So you should reply uh, maybe thank uh, the person who has left a comment to your post uh, and uh, comment uh, uh, at your side. The, the second action could be check celebrations. This is a new feature uh, from LinkedIn. Uh, at this URL, you can uh, uh, monitor job changes, birthdays, and also work anniversaries. So you can congratulate for a promotion, you can celebrate for a, a birthday or for a work anniversary. Third step uh, is also about uh, listening is uh, verify who has viewed your profile. Uh, so filter out to discover visit from your ICP. So who from the people who visited your, your profile are relevant, interesting people from maybe a business point of view. So you can use these filters to segment your audience, the people who landed your profile. Uh, um, once a day, so visit uh, uh, your uh, uh, this page and uh, you could act uh, in two different ways. For instance, uh, you could visit uh, the profile of uh, your first level connections and uh, send a reactivation, a re-engagement message. Uh, how how are you do, are you going? How are you getting on? So you could reactivate your relationships with people who have visited your profile, and then you could have a look to your second level connection. So if they are relevant, if they are interesting, you could start engaging with these people, and then we will. Uh, um, deepen further this uh, engagement process. So you could visit uh, and analyze their profile, you could uh, start following, you could uh, hit the bell to get notified for uh, their next posts and so on. Even you could uh, decide to send a connection request, maybe the day after of the following one. So my suggestion is not to immediately send a connection request, but waiting at least 24, 40 hour, 48 hours before doing it. Uh, check your inbox. Uh, have you received any message you haven't already read? Watch who accepted your connection request. 
could reply the, to your event invitation, for instance. And uh, accordingly, you could send, uh, send them a welcome message, or you could start a conversation, uh, not uh, in a sales way. So a um, couple of times during the day, you could check your inbox, maybe uh, in the morning at 7.30 in the morning and, and maybe after, after lunch. And another step, a uh, check inbound invitations. So who uh, has uh, invited you? Who has uh, um, sent you a connection request? Who has invited to follow their pages or uh, uh, to uh, register to their events or to their newsletters. So uh, in a network page, in my network page, you can navigate through all your kind of invitations. Start from people and check who has sent you a connection request. Uh, and uh, start from uh, uh, from uh, this uh, this point to analyze uh, the connection request. So second step is manage, uh, uh, for instance, the inbound connection request and prepare your day before getting out. So manage your inbound request. So you have three options: accept the request, decline, or reply. Uh, most of the time, I use the third option. Uh, here is a reply message template. Thanks for your invitation. I usually connect with people I know and maybe unlike and trust. May I ask you how you found me? Why did you decide to invite me? Thanks in advance. So uh, see you soon. So uh, instead of uh, deciding uh, in a hurry, to decline an invitation, maybe not personalized, not convincing, have a chance to this person, ask him to explain why he decided or she decided to invite you. Uh, another point, another step, navigate through the connections of your next meeting. Let's say it's 8 a.m., you have already signed up, you have prepared to, uh, I mean, face your day, you're about to leave home. Before a business meeting, study the LinkedIn profiles of the people you're going to meet. Navigate maybe through his or her connections of people who are already your first level connections. Uh, using Sales Navigator, so click on View in Sales Navigator, you can literally mine through their connections. So you can use the filter connections of in Sales Navigator, uh, apply all of the filters that are representative of your ideal client profile and discover, we will, you will discover who uh, this person, in this case Andrea Romali, is suitable to um, uh, present to you, to introduce to you to some of uh, his uh, connections. So you should, you could decide every day for asking an introduction, an introduction to one of your first level connections. So you should ask for introduction request. Uh, for instance, you could uh, send a message like that. Hi, Andrea, I noticed you are connected with uh, Paolo, with Olga. I have gained a lot of knowledge in the same industry of him or of her. I think that sharing my professional experience uh, could be beneficial for him. Would you mind uh, you introduce to me? Then you can add uh, some uh, other sentences and uh, conclude your, your invitation request. So this is uh, uh, something that maybe is not so utilized uh, even in Italy, but uh, it could be the third option besides uh, inviting a person or maybe uh, sending him or her an email. 
So it's important uh, once you have uh, defined your uh, target accounts, uh, if you use an, an ABM approach, uh, you should identify the decision making unit components that you would like to uh, attract, to engage, and to connect with. Here are uh, an example of uh, four different types of uh, people that you could meet or engage. And they are decision makers. These are the decision makers who are responsible for uh, budget management. Influencer, they could be the end users. Uh, um, the influencer, they could be also uh, just the first level connections so you have inside the company, inside the target uh, company. Champion could be an end user, and mirror could be a people like you, maybe a sales manager, a key account manager, a consultant uh, that uh, would be more uh, likely to accept your invitation. So uh, one uh, new uh, brand new functionality uh, features in a sales navigator is the possibility to create uh, your personas. Here is an example of persona. You can define until to five different personas and uh, you can uh, select uh, the job function, the seniority level, the current job title and the geography to define each persona on sales navigator. So you could use this feature to define your decision maker uh, prototype, your influencer, your champion, and your mirror. And here there are some examples. Let's suppose uh, that uh, you are going to uh, reach uh, to a target a chief technology officer that is in, who could be a decision maker, or maybe uh, you could use the combination of uh, uh, seniority and the function and job function instead of job role. And another thing, another step, another action you could do is uh, take leverage of your next meeting to uh, start engaging and sending messaging to messages to internal potential influencer. So you could send to maybe some champions or influencers that you have detected on Sales Navigator, a message like that. Uh, John, next Thursday, next Thursday at 5 p.m., I will meet your colleague at your premises in Milan to discuss about CRM project. I thought to continue to introduce me to you, even for not just uh, for now, just through LinkedIn. If you were free on that time, we could meet each each other before or after my scheduling meeting with your colleague. See, so it's important to create a bridge from online to real life, to offline. So try to uh, gain this opportunity of an off-site off meeting to enlarge the possibility to meet other people inside your target company. Third point is engage potential uh, customers. So engage with your uh, prospect, uh, start following them uh, on LinkedIn, save them as a lead and sales navigator, save their posts and comments, uh, and then start commenting their posts. Uh, you can use some hooks to start a conversation. Uh, find a commonality, a common ground, uh, uh, some original point uh, that uh, could attract your attention. Share with them relevant insights. So it's the educational phase of this pro process is very important. So every day, try to educate your prospects, help them to make the right decision. And before sending them a material, a book, a link, and so on, ask them for the permission to share with them some valuable content. 
engage with your prospects. So go on to their profile, uh, start following them, uh, hit the bell, uh, view in sales navigator. And so uh, save, a, a, save a, the, um, uh, the prospect as the lead. And also you can, uh, we have already said, uh, you can activate the sales alerts. So you should uh, be uh, notified uh, when uh, this person uh, will go, will, uh, will start uh, publishing or uh, will interact or will engage with uh, other of your posts. Saving to bookmarks. And then the fourth phase, uh, the fourth phase is about connect. So connect to your leads. Uh, invest 10 minutes a day to connect with your leads. You could decide if uh, it's worth uh, um, sending a connection request or uh, it's better to send an, an email. If the person is not very active on LinkedIn, uh, his profile is very poor and so on, maybe this person will be more reachable using an email an email if uh, the, the person is very um, active on linkedin maybe my suggestion is to send him a connection request so this is a tricky point is the critical point how to engage a person you could, uh, we could send him a connection request. We could uh, send an email. We could ask someone else for a presentation, for an introduction. Uh, try to uh, personalize your message. Show this person that you have invested your time to, uh, to try to understand better his person. Oh yeah, this is the short post. Oh, excuse me, but uh, uh, my dog is not able to open the door, so uh, I had to. <laughs> it's important. So uh, the fifth point is about uh, creation. So creation and curation and new content. So the three C are creation, curation, and commenting. C is a, a triple C strategy about content. So start uh, using uh, the search, for instance, uh, uh, do a search uh, using specific uh, industry hashtags, uh, and start following uh, the hashtags, uh, find uh, your new authors, uh, experts, uh, start following them, hit the bell. So um, this uh, uh, content could be inspiring for you, could help you to engage with uh, influencers, with experts, and also they could uh, have you some ideas for new content. Comment influencers post. It's a good way, it's a great way to uh, uh, have visibility to uh, enter in your uh, um, attention radar. So, and also you can use uh, the search filter uh, post. Uh, so you can use, uh, for instance, a keyword social selling filter for posts to uh, discover all the person maybe that in the last two uh, weeks uh, have published content about uh, social selling. So engage with your post, uh, add your expertise, uh, add your comments, write your comments, uh, create a new post. Here is uh, a post uh, about uh, Olga and Katerina that uh, they were guests to one of my last uh, podcast shows. And so every day dedicate some time to create, comment or curate uh, some content. Another phase, the sex phase, very important uh, is uh, uh, trying to maintain high the temperature of your relationship. So as a plant, uh, every day you should uh, feed 
your plant, your growing relationships. So nurture your relationship. Um, how? By sharing valuable content. So uh, plan to uh, share with your lead, with your prospect, uh, a cadence of con a content that uh, available content that you should uh, you could schedule and plan uh, in in advance. For instance, uh, send uh, a third message after the welcome message, uh, one week uh, after the second message uh, to deepen uh, to strengthen uh, your relationship. And as I said before, adopt a permission-based approach. So don't send the content right away. Ask the prospect if he would like to receive it. Uh, in, the, in this way, you will position your content as required, as de desired by your prospects. The last but not least, let's say, step is uh, to measure. Uh, and uh, to refine uh, this uh, uh, process, process that is a circular process. So here are 10 activities you could do every day. Uh, let's uh, review them briefly. Check who has visited your profile. Monitor who has engaged with your post. Uh, find your prospect. Use the LinkedIn search or uh, the filters, uh, the lead filters and the action filters on session navigator. Engage with the, the person, with the prospect, uh, comment their post. Send them connection request or email, send a welcome mention, a message, send relationship building messages to strengthen your relationship. Uh, until then, uh, the lead is self ready. And uh, in that case, uh, you uh, will send a, an invitation for maybe a meeting or a, a video call, a brief introductory preliminary video call. In each step of your cadence, you should show and give real value. Create a new post, track the results. Uh, so this is my intervention. I hope uh, I have uh, uh, remained in the 25 minutes. Yeah, thank you so much, Leonardo. It was very useful because there are a lot of uh, practical tips and tricks. You can use it right now. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, if you show your contacts, I think it will help people to, uh, for example, send you a message if they have some questions, etc. So, yeah, thank you so much. Very useful yeah. presentation yeah. and very systematic approach, actually. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. So I don't know because I, I can see the screen uh, if there are some uh, questions. Yeah, yeah. No I, will, I will ask uh, some questions from our audience. Yeah, because we broadcast it to different platforms and we <laughs> accommodate all of the questions. And uh, the first question is about influencers. Uh, how to engage with influencers? Is it important or not? Do we need it? What could you say about it? I mean, uh, um, influencer uh, could be, I mean, a, a, a very good uh, point to... Uh, attract uh, to deepen and to strengthen because uh, it could uh, contribute uh, to influence a purchasing decision. So in that sense, uh, we could uh, uh, consider the influence, uh, let's say an external influencer that attends uh, to the committing, uh, to the buying committee table. Uh, how also uh, you could uh, take leverage of influencer in, in, in two ways. The first one is to uh, get, uh, I mean, uh, let's say, um, acknowledged by the influencer who could uh, write a comment on, uh, on your post, who, had, who could confirm your skill or could, could, uh, he could uh, write a recommendation uh, on your profile. Uh, 
this is a very good way to, I mean, strengthen your professional brand, uh, to gain visibility and uh, to increase your uh, professional reputation. Uh, another way is uh, to consider that uh, maybe uh, your prospect are reading the content of, of your influencer of influencer of industry influencers that you have uh, are going to follow and uh, interact with them so it's another way to remain in the attention rather of your prospect yeah great tips thank you so much and uh, we have one more question uh, regarding the automation of some social selling actions what do you think about it um, is it possible to use automation is it okay is it appropriate or automation just makes it worse what do you think about Lord, it? Uh, my my position is this one I'm, I'm not a huge fan of automation i tend uh, for, for for instance for a new client uh, to create this process uh, manually and then uh, after my, maybe some months uh, to understand if some uh, mechanism are, uh, I mean, uh, autom automatable. So if I could uh, automate some steps or some, uh, let's say, action. Uh, but uh, I prefer to go slow and uh, try to uh, uh, maybe automation to just to uh, avoid uh, repetitive uh, no added value task mm -hmm. okay but uh, if uh, i have to send uh, let's say a connection uh, request message uh, i prefer to uh, create my message not to send uh, even if uh, with automation you can uh, personalize some elements, some variables, it's not the same as you can create, as you create an original message, in my opinion. So uh, you have to, I mean, take attention to, to, um, to take a right balance between the two uh, opposite directions personalization and automation, because with automation, you can introduce some personalization. Some time is not enough. It's not sufficient. Yeah, this is true. Thank you so much, Leonardo. And yeah, we really appreciate you came to us and shared a very insightful presentation. Thank you so much. It means a lot for us. And- um, uh, You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, linkedin for business.it unfortunately is only on uh, in italian language <laughs> my my site my website my blog uh, and you can also uh, send me a question on linkedin uh, in a private way uh, okay yeah thank you so much and i would like to <clears throat> introduce our next speakers actually our final speakers for today's webinar um, um uh, marcel uh, Marcel, actually, I, I don't know how to pronounce your, your last name correctly. Could you please uh, say it? Sure. Well, it depends where you are in the road. In English, you just go for Cahen, really. Cahen, yeah. Yeah, sorry for that. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. I just realized that, yeah, this is mm -hmm. awkward. Uh, the Vice President of New Business at International Fintech Company Exante and Sofia Lopatkin actually from our team, International Project Director at Moduma. And uh, together, Marcel and Sofia, they will um, share our case study uh, with Exante, uh, how actually um, some maybe educational activities help the sales teams to generate leads uh, using their personal social media profiles. So please uh, go ahead. Yeah, it would be great. To okay. Hi, it. everyone. Thanks, Olga. Thanks, everyone who joined us today. So let's move quickly to our presentation as we have lots of interesting and useful things to say. But uh, before, before I start, let me introduce my colleague again. He was one of the participants of the social selling project. Now Marcel uh, just moved to Brazil to develop uh, the company in this location. Uh, so hi, Marcel, how are you doing today? 
Hey, Sophia, how are you doing? Thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you, Olga. It's, it's very good to see you here. I, I was watching the, all the content that uh, Leonardo gave us as well, and it's all so interesting and so not obvious, isn't it? That is, Thank it's you. amazing. To, you, you look at it and you, you just remind things that you, you thought you knew and you never did. So very good, very happy to be here. Thank you. Nice to see you. It was a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great, great. So thank you so much. So a few words about me and we will dive into this case study for sure. Uh, I'm Sofia, as Olga already said, I'm the International Projects Director at Modumab. I'm so excited to be here. So let's, uh, let's start our presentation. So if we are talking about financial industry and especially B2B sector, there is a pivotal factor that affects the result and its trust and clients' loyalty, but not only to the company, but to the people that represent it as well. Moreover, there is a huge number of competitors in this sphere, so it's not enough you know, just to make cold, uh, cold calls, cold emails. You have to build a long-term relationship with your leads, with your potential uh, leads and clients. And uh, that was exactly the point uh, that we at Modumap helped with. And here I'd like to give the floor to Marcel. Uh, Marcel, could you please uh, start from the very beginning and share with us your expectations of the program, uh, maybe your business goals that you set in this project, maybe you know, um, maybe you know the answer how you and your colleagues were selected for this group. Could you please share? Sure. Well, th that's a question that uh, I asked internally, how, how did we get selected for that? And well, the answer was quite obvious. It was, um, it's a B2B training. So we just chose those people that will be working with B2B. Uh, that's how they, they chose. Um, they also chose some um, some regional heads, some people that would have obviously taken it forward to the teams, uh, which was very good. So yeah, that's 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 how the decision of who was persuaded. It was twenty people, right? I think. Yeah, twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So so shall I answer what 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 I want to achieve? Yeah. Well, I think just just like everyone, business, right? I mean, just just growth. Uh, but how how would you get there? So I think. Uh, by, by doing this, and of course, we're talking about social selling and systematic social selling, about um, projecting a professional image. Um, how would you do that again? So, so of course, you want business, you, you want to just, just grow your company. But then there is a lot in, in the mean. I mean, you want new clients, but how you get that? So what do you want to achieve is, I think, growth in general. And then going to what are the business goals? Uh, that, that I mean on LinkedIn, I think that is easier to answer because you you want to build you don't want to build you want to be genuine, but you want to have a personal brand. You want to be seen as 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 that one person, right? And there was a discussion in the chat that was very interesting on, on this topic. Um, I wanted to be present as well, something that uh, I had been using LinkedIn for a long time, mainly on like for for outbound uh, selling. But I wasn't very present. I wasn't posting a lot. So learning how it changes was very good. Uh, I want to be up to date. I want to see what other people are doing as well. And I want them to know what I'm doing. So that's, that generates business. Um, reach out to potential business partners, not just clients, but suppliers as well. I've, I've been doing this an awful lot, an awful lot uh, this past uh, few months. And it works better than, you know, I mean, I need um, a supplier for, I don't know, credit cards. Instead of going to, to the regional ways, uh, LinkedIn is so much easier and the responses are, are so much better, especially if you already have that, that personal brand. And one thing that I think not everyone agrees on, but I like that, is to be reached. Um, yeah. Of course, there is a lot of spam, definitely, but there is always something good in that. So it's, it's very good, actually. This was a business go and it works really well when you can filter that. So those yeah. are the... Uh, Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really interesting to know the answer. Thank you, Marcel. Um, okay, so now let's talk more in details about social selling and how we organized this mentoring group in general. So here you can see, you know, kind of a theoretical slide that explains how social selling works. So um, it's a step-by-step -step process. And first of all, you send connection requests to potential partners and clients. So you increase the number of your target audience. Then it's very crucial to generate demand by posting relevant content and show your expertise 
expertise by talking about your company's case studies, by showing your expertise, your corporate news and different announcements. And the next step is about building relationships. The more times you appear in the notification section of your lead, the better, the better for you. Yes, you can interact by liking or commenting their posts by endorsing skills, for example. And then it's all about conversation. Yes, it's all about chatting with the specific person you are interested in. You can offer valuable content or invite to a relevant event or just provide, you know, small talk with them. Besides, you can introduce yourself, uh, tell more about your company, highlight uh, important numbers and highlight your competitive advantages and suggest to set up an introductory call to discuss potential co collaboration. So uh, now you have uh, a clear understanding of how social services and works and what steps there are inside uh, this process. Uh, so let's come back to the uh, to the case studies with Exanta. Yes, as Marcel already said, we had two groups, 20 people in uh, general in total, and uh, those were people from uh, Exanta team from different uh, countries. You can see it on the slide, Great Britain, the USA, Greece, Turkey, Chile, Russia, Singapore, and uh, some other countries. Uh, what we did, we did weekly thematic webinars for the participants where we discussed all topics regarding social selling. We started from uh, the positioning on LinkedIn, from the profile designing, uh, then we talked about target audience growth, about automation, about content, uh, social selling index, uh, and uh, many more topics. And um, as a result, the Exanta team had active dialogues and calls with the leading banks, with brokers and other financial institutions from uh, many countries as well. Uh, here you can see, uh, you know, the example of some of the Marcel's posts. Sorry, Marcel, but you are like the best candidate to uh, to show the variety of content. Uh, and uh, we discussed that it's uh, very important to show your personality. Yes, so uh, we um, tried to motivate participants to make publications also on personal topics. And uh, the first screen, um, the first screenshot that I made is the post where Marcel, uh, where you talk. Uh, about living abroad and you also attached to your personal photo from your uh, youth uh, and uh, just look at the numbers uh, the number of impressions yes uh, they speak for uh, themselves and i think it uh, it was it was the great post uh, so if you're developing your expert image on linkedin we highly recommend uh, mixing personal and uh, professional content as well as uh, for the second screenshot that i made uh, this slide is called Community Matters, and one of the tasks uh, for us was to unite the participants and not only to give support from our side, but to show the importance of support, uh, support each other, yet to share interesting insights and experience with each other. So uh, once we decided to create a script database uh, where every participant could share their successful uh, script, and I still believe it was a, a really great idea. Um, and, you know, after our project, we asked uh, the group members to share what topics uh, they liked the most. And it was a really surprise for me personally to know that uh, many people noted the topic about psychological issues. Um, they liked uh, the topic about psychological issues that stop them from staying active on social media. Uh, during our mentoring group, uh, we talked a lot about perfectionism, about imposter syndrome, about our estimating your target audience and um uh, we have a lot of feedback from guys uh, that uh, they had the same problems and they didn't know how to cope with them. So we told them about our experience and our tips that helped us to avoid such issues. And yes, you know, it's very interesting because this topic is not directly correlated with social selling itself. Uh, and it's about your general activity on social media. But you can't ignore these uh, factors if you have, uh, you know, such, such issues in your head. So yes, this topic was uh, one of the most you know, memorable and one of the most interesting uh, topics of our project. Okay, it's clear with the uh, thematic webinars. So now let's talk about internal motivation and support. So what we did here, we tracked the results of each participant and prepared weekly reports in open access. I think when we talk about social selling inside one company, it's important to understand how things are going for me and for my colleague as well. Yes, to understand the whole picture. Um, 
how it is going uh, inside uh, inside the community. And moreover, we marked personal achievements as well. We had uh, uh, weekly agency awards, for example, if someone stood out uh, with regular content or with content with uh, lots of uh, number of interactions, or for example, if someone was actively involved in the discussion at sessions. And in the last session, we gave uh, virtual Oscars to all the participants and wrote down what we were given this award for. For example, uh, we had uh, Oscars for the best result in terms of the number of calls they made. Uh, someone uh, got their Oscar for uh, the most uh, posts, for the most uh, interesting posts, yes, uh, for uh, the number of um, uh, target audience representatives in their connection. So yeah, it was a, a really great uh, activity to unite and to motivate people um, do uh, do a lot of activities. And uh, I can't help but note the fact that social selling project was not just about lead generation results, yes? It's about new friendships uh, among colleagues as well, because before joining the group, some Exante employees didn't know each other. And uh, after this group, they started actively communicate with them. And it was also interesting feedback that we got after our project. And uh, after our last session, we, ask, uh, we asked the group participants to give us anonymous uh, feedback, and here you can see the result. I had two screenshots here. The first one is about the most valuable content they got during this project, and um, the second one is the overall impression, yes, of the project, and I think the result uh, is uh, quite great. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, people uh, noted a uh, uh, lot of uh, different topics. Some of them said that uh, they they liked uh, the topics about content, some of them about psychological issues, uh, some lead generation messages. So different uh, type of content uh, they noted as the most interesting during our project. And uh, some of the participants, for example, David, Nadira and Marcel decided to make a post about our project uh, in open access. And uh, were, it was really like a great pleasure to read it. And uh, we're really glad to give such positive feedback on social media. And all that said that the course was right and the goal uh, was achieved as, as uh, for my opinion. And um, no, what's then what's uh, going on uh, LinkedIn uh, on LinkedIn profiles of the participants after our project, we noticed that about 70% of managers remained still active on LinkedIn, they still publish posts, they interact with other people's profiles. And here I'd like to ask Marcel you again, to share your experience after, uh, after our projects. Could you please tell us more about your current LinkedIn activity, maybe uh, uh, you're going to use LinkedIn in your new professional uh, direction in Brazil. Uh, so could you please share your insight and uh, thoughts about it? Sure. Well, we've learned that uh, being regular and posting and on the activities was very important because otherwise it fades very quickly, right? Yeah. Um, for example, now I, I post, but one thing that I learned with the program was that I can't just post anything. I mean, it would be very easy just to repost things from the company or from the market. And 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 I, th I think not just me, but most people I know, they want to project this expert's image because, you know, I think most people I know want to be seen as an expert. But then studying that, you realize that be seen as an expert is where you don't get much resonance. You don't get much reach. Uh, you do get, well, some relevance, uh, but, the point is, you can post whatever you want to, but it needs to be relevant to, to, to your crowd, to, to your target audience. So I've been trying to post every two to three days. I don't like many posts in a row. Sometimes I have something urgent. I would just wait until mm -hmm. like one or two days. So one post wouldn't, wouldn't just take over the, the next one. And I think that's it. It's, it's doing everything that, um, well, we have to learn that. It, it, it doesn't come without knowledge. Uh, some personal branding, you have to do some professional, you have to share, you have to comment, you have to like. Uh, we came up to learn that likes are good, but comments are better. Uh, you have to reach out to more people. Uh, the SSI will take that, as we've seen, in, in consideration, and you have a better, uh, a better exposure to, to your posts. 
So one good example in, in my new role, so we're, we're, we're hiring, we're expanding all over Latin America right now, which is very exciting. And we've just made an offer, for example, for someone in Colombia mm -hmm. uh, that reached out to me like, wow, I've seen you, you've taken this position, you're growing to here in, into the region. I've always followed Accent, I work in the industry, and I'd love to learn more if, if you're going to hire here. And we didn't, we didn't even have a, a, a post for, 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 um, for, for that position in particular at the time. And what's very exciting is that just because of, of being active and everything, it's already helping me to attract good candidates and then to just develop the business, really. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, just, I saw your notification that, regular. that now you're hiring. Uh, this LinkedIn mark. Yeah, now we're open. We're, we've opened a few yeah. a few positions already, but that was like a month ago or two months ago. So that was very good, just for for the content. Really, that was really yeah. good. Okay. okay, thank you so much for sharing uh, for sharing with us. Uh, so that's all for today from our side. Thank you so much for your attention, and it was really a great pleasure to uh, share with uh, you our case study with Exante. And um, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel and Sofia. It was a very interesting presentation, and you shared a lot of insights. Yeah, how how this process looked like uh, inside the company. Thank you for that. Uh, and actually, we have some questions. Uh, first question uh, is about Marcel to you uh, about your motivation because you. Mm, are very disciplined in terms of your LinkedIn profile and you are active on here and how you find your motivation, how you find your inspiration to systematically develop your profile? How you do it, it? It's, a good, it's a good question. To be honest, 70 to 80% of the time, I don't want to do it. I just want to do something else. I just want to, you know, speak to clients or do something else. But I've, I've came to understand how important it is uh, so what I do, um, and I, I, I got it from, from some previous colleagues as well, is to be systematic in your approach as well. So I dedicate um, half an hour to 45 minutes in the morning, some 15 to 20 minutes in the afternoon. I put it in my agenda and I try to stick to it. I don't, I don't reply to, to um, questions or to, to messages in between and, and trying to be the more organized you can. Uh, it, it helps for me. I mean, it, it's just put in your agenda, do it. I mean, you have to do it. It's business. You, you just like you, you have to to search for new business. You have to to look for your existing clients. It's part of my job, and that's how I see it. So it's about one hour a day that that I dedicate to to the business via LinkedIn. So that's it. It's just being regular, really. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think being regular and systematic, yeah, is the key and to locate some time for this mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much so uh i guess we don't have more questions i'm just checking it out but looks like um we just asked all of the questions because we actually had some questions which sophia already asked <laughs> so yeah uh thank you so much thank you everyone for joining us today and we Hope that our the whole webinar was useful to you and you can implement some uh, things, some insights which we covered today. Thank you so much and have a good day, uh, evening or or any other daytime you have. Yeah, and thank you to our speakers very much. Thanks, great. Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.